Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you one of those traditional Christmas DIYs that so many of us do every year. And what kind of DIY is it? A gingerbread house. How many of us buy those gingerbread kits and we make a house with our family and as they are a lot of fun, I love doing them because boy oh boy do they have some really cool kits now. The hard part is getting rid of it at the end of the year. I don't know about you, but I've never been real successful in saving mine or even sealing it to save it. And so year after year, they seem to always get thrown away and I just hate it. I always take a good picture of it to save it. This year, because Dollar Tree had these here plaques, these cool little houses, how sticky cute are these? When I saw them, I instantly knew that I could do a full-blown gingerbread house with these. And so that's just what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna do a full gingerbread house. I'm not just gonna DIY these plaques and that's it. Oh no, we're putting together a full house with a cool little scene and it's gonna be double-sided. Let me show you just how easy it is to decorate these and let's do a gingerbread house using Dollar Tree items. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so getting started with today's DIY, I'll be using two of these gingerbread houses from the Dollar Tree, and I'll also be using two of these stinking adorable gingerbread cookies, or gingerbread men, women, whatever you want it to be that I got from Michael's, and as you can see, they were 99 cents, so it's a great buy. For the house and the gingerbread men, I don't want to paint them because if I paint them then I'm gonna lose that capability of following the lines that are ingrained into the wood and I want to go with a rustic feel so to achieve that rustic feel I decided to stick with staining them and to stain them I'm gonna use some of Minwax's stain in the color of mocha now this is a stain color that I had left over from my village stand the great thing about Minwax is they've got a ton of colors. They've got a color for everybody. So if this dark color isn't for you, I'm sure that there's definitely one you'll find that you like by Minwax. You can get a small bottle of Minwax for about $4. If you've been following me for a while, you know I am all about textures. So to decorate the house and the gingerbread men, I will be using this puffy paint that I got from Michaels on clearance for $5.97. This is a multicolor pack and so I couldn't resist it. Typically you can get these bottles for a dollar a piece and so the fact that I could get this whole pack for $5.97 on clearance was a win-win to me and so I figured that these would be the perfect colors to use for my gingerbread house. I wanted to go with that dark wood but the pastel feel and I like textures. I feel like textures add dimension they add character something a bit different than just adding a flat paint and i like how the puffy paint kind of just puffs up it looks fun and so that's what i'm going for for this and so i'm not really going to talk through the whole thing because you'll see what i'm doing so if this is a style that you want to copy you can go along with me but pretty much for the whole house i'm going to just use the different colors of puffy paint that i have When using the puffy paint bottle to actually apply the puffy paint, it can be a bit hard to get into some of the smaller areas or really get that fine detailing in. So if you just take a thin paintbrush and kind of spread out the paint, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the trees, I really liked this pea green, but once I put it on to both the trees and the wreath on the door, I felt like it was just too bland. I felt like a bit more detail needed to be added. So I went in with like a Christmas tree green, a darker green, and just added a bit of detail. And you can do that just by kind of adding some dots or lines of the darker green, then taking a real fine paintbrush and just kind of spreading it out and doing small strokes with lines just to give it a bit of dimension is what we're looking for just so it doesn't look like this green triangle on this house and lastly i'm going to finish this wreath off with a cute pink bow once i'm done with this bow i'm going to go ahead and let both of my plaques dry because i did both houses identical because this gingerbread house is going to be double-sided I wanted to be able to place it on my countertop where my bar stools are and be able to see it from both sides. I didn't want to only see the back of the house when I'm standing in the kitchen doing my dishes. And so I really wanted this to be a double sided piece and so that is why I did two houses identical. Now I'm not going to be using puffy paint for the snow because this project needs a lot of white puffy paint because it's going to have a lot of snow. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that once these houses dry. I am loving the look of this. Now if these colors aren't for you, I say get creative. Make it your own. Make it to suit your decor style because that is definitely what I do when I'm doing my DIYs. So like I said, because there is such an excessive amount of snow that I need for this DIY, I'm going to be using this all-purpose caulking that you can get at Dollar Tree. This is by Toolbench. This is a 4.5 fluid ounce tube, and I picked up four of these for this DIY. So $4 versus $4 for one of the larger size puffy paint bottles that you could get at Walmart is a way better price because one of those larger size puffy paint bottles is not going to be enough for this. You would end up needing four or five of those bottles and I just can't see spending $20 in puffy paint when I can use something like caulking, which is going to give this amazing character. The effect that this caulking is going to give this piece is going to be amazing because it really is going to give it that snow look, but also that frosting look. We can't lose that frosting look because that's the look that comes with a gingerbread house is the frosting that you use to put it together. And so it wouldn't be a gingerbread house without the frosting. And so just by applying the caulking to the areas that the snow is going to be, you can see just how amazing this is looking. And you can use the bottle to apply it. For these smaller areas, like the ledge of the window, I found that it was hard to get the coverage that I wanted neatly. And so because I do know that most caulkings are water soluble, I knew that if I added just enough to the center of, say, this ledge here, then I took a paintbrush with just a bit of water, I could easily spread out the caulking. And I know this because I have used caulking before and you can easily wipe up the mess with a sponge once you've applied it to say, you know, your shower. If you're re-caulking your shower, you can usually clean it up and make it neat using a wet sponge. And so taking that, I just knew that, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and you can see just how easily by wetting the paintbrush and moving around the caulking, it makes it very pliable. Now if you tried to do this without the water, it kind of has this goopy feeling to it and the whole piece of caulking just kind of moves. The, or I guess not the piece, but the area of caulking that you just put down on your project, it comes up in one piece. And so I knew that if I just added the water to the paintbrush, I could get it to spread out and be evenly placed. And so you can see here that I did all these edges of the gingerbread house and outlined it and this is what I'm left with. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. While the houses are drying, I thought I'd just show you real quick what I do with two, both of the gingerbread men. And so again, I am using puffy paint and these are little puffy paint pens that you can get at Walmart. I believe it came in like a 25 pack for $6. 
and because again I love working with puppy paint so much I picked it up because I was doing so many projects using it I knew it would come in handy and so again with these I did stain them the same color as the house it may be too dark for some people but the wood in my house is this color and so I am a very rustic person as you all know and so I just wanted to stay true to my nature and true to my decor and I am loving the darker look of these and so I think just by adding some of the lighter paint to them it's really gonna make them pop and it's really gonna give it that rustic farmhouse feel that I'm going for even though this is a gingerbread house all my pieces are dry. Look at how cute these are. I just love them. Again, you can find these at Michael's in the dollar bins. Both my houses are dry. Now it is time to actually put this piece together and show you how fun this piece is. To put it together and make these a full house, I will be using some of Dollar Tree's wood planks. And I'm gonna go ahead and just flip my house over. And on the back side, I'm gonna take two of the planks in their original size. There's no reason to cut them down. We got lucky for this project. I'm gonna place some Aileen's glue on the side. And this is going to be our roof line. So two of these plaques, set right there at the top of the roof works perfectly for the roof line. For the sides of the house, I wanted to stain them so they actually match the house itself. And so I stained my wood and you can see that just using some scissors, I cut off this amount. You don't need a saw for this. You can very easily cut through these wood planks with scissors. And so again, I'm gonna use some of Aileen's glue to attach these walls, I guess, of the house on each side right below, I guess, the roof line. Before I add the top to this house, I decided to go in with my hot glue and just reinforce those seams just to really make sure they stay together because I don't want my house to fall apart. I want this to be a piece that lasts for years to come. And so I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna use a couple sticks of glue here to really reinforce this and keep it together. And now it's time to just add the top of the house. And so again, using Aileen's glue, I'm gonna add it to the edges. I'm gonna place the top of my house right on top. Now, because these wood plaques are not always the straightest, and especially when you paint them or stain them, they can warp just a little bit. I'm gonna use some magazines and I'm gonna place them right on top just to put a little weight and to hold it down onto this piece while it dries. I just love to see a project come together. Look at how cool that looks. I am loving this. We've got a full gingerbread house using 100% Dollar Tree items. For the roof, you guessed it, I'm gonna use more caulking because there is an enormous amount of snow that needs to be put on the top of this roof. And again, using puffy paint, it's just gonna cost way too much. So why would you use puffy paint when you can use Dollar Tree's caulking? And honestly, I think the outcome and the look of it is way better because we're getting that look of icing. And I also wanted to show you that not only did I do the roof, but I did the sides of the house as well where the seams were because again, I'm going for that icing look that you have when you're putting your pieces together. Look at how amazing this looks after it's dried. I am obsessed with this piece. I love it, it's so stinking cute. Now, because I'm making this kind of a scene and it's double-sided, I'll be using this plaque from the Dollar Tree. And again, using some of my favorite glue, Aileen's glue. I do suggest using a glue versus a hot glue because by the time you get hot glue all the way around the base of this, it's gonna dry. And so you wanna really use something that's gonna adhere nicely. And so once I've got the bottom of my house outlined, I'm gonna go ahead and place this right in the center of my plaque on the back side because why am I gonna use the other side? I also picked up a couple of these bottle brush trees that you can get from Dollar Tree, great buy, and I thought that these would be perfect for this as well. Before I add snow, I want to add a dirt path going from the front door on both sides. And so to do that, I'm going to use some of Aileen's clear gel glue. Now I'm doing this because honestly, I don't know if the regular Aileen's glue dries white or clear and I don't want the white to show through the dirt. And so since I had this on hand, 
You can get this at the Dollar Tree. I figured that this would work perfectly. And so I'm just gonna use it to outline a path, no need to be perfect, and I'm gonna fill the path in with the glue. Once I've got the path filled in, I am gonna go back over it with a paintbrush because I don't want any spots that aren't covered because when I place the dirt down, it's not gonna stick to those spots. And so I'm gonna be generous when I add the glue and I'm just gonna really spread it out and make sure that all the areas in that path are covered nicely. And what am I using for dirt? I am using coffee grounds. Now this was a coffee holiday pack that I got last year and this wasn't one of my favorite blends and so I never used it. And so instead of throwing it away, I tend to keep these little packs because you can use them in a DIY. It makes for a great alternative to dirt. And if you're not a coffee drinker, then go outside and scoop up some dirt and put it on your DIY for your path. Once you've placed your coffee grounds, I would let it dry for just a few minutes, really get it set in there. And then I just took my whole contraption here over to the sink and just kind of tapped on it and blew the excess coffee grounds off. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of made a mess, but that's okay. You could always take it outside, do the same thing. Who knows? It's cold though, it's been rainy. I didn't want to go outside, so the sink worked. We are almost done with this. Now, to add the snow to the ground outside of the house, it took two tubes. I used one tube on each side of the house because I wanted to be generous. I wanted a nice thick layer of snow. And so to do that, there really isn't all that much caulking in these tubes. And so one tube per side was perfect. I think for the roof, I used a tube and a half. And so, like I said before, a total of four tubes is what's needed, and then you'll have a little bit of extra left over to save for another DIY, another Christmas DIY. Before the caulking slash snow dries, I wanted to place my gingerbread man, girl, in the front here. And so just by placing it in the wet caulking and really getting it in there, it's going to dry and adhere to the ground. Now, I felt like this was missing a couple things, so I couldn't be done with it yet. So I headed back on over to the Dollar Tree to their candy section and thought that Sweet Tarts, Sweet Hearts would be the perfect finishing touch to add a nice, fun, colorful, pastel fence to the outside of this to match the house itself. Okay, did I already say I am so obsessed with the way this looks? I am loving the outcome of this, and what I love most is that this is something that I can keep for year after year. I will tell you, though, that I still felt like something was missing, and I didn't know what to put there, so I headed over to Walmart because I had a snowman in my village that I thought would be perfect, only the colors weren't so perfect. And so I took this snowman and I went ahead and used the puffy paint that I used on the house itself and I repainted it to match and I placed it there in the front yard and this was the perfect finishing touch to this. Can I just tell you, I absolutely love the way this turned out. I think that it is so stinking cute and what I'm most excited about is that it's something that I can keep year after year. It's something that I've added to the decor of my home. I can date it and it's something that I'm going to have for years to come and I love that. It was really fun to do. It was easy. It was budget friendly. I'm going to say that it cost about the same amount to make this as it would buying one of those $10 kits that you get at the grocery store or at Walmart, wherever it is you get them. And $10 is actually a pretty inexpensive one. They go from 10 to $20. And so I think that this was a great deal. It was fun to DIY and the benefit is that I'm gonna have it for years to come. I hope you all enjoyed my Dollar Tree DIY gingerbread house. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, oh no, no, we're switching it up. Let's get it to 6,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now.